Welcome back to the channel folks and to another tutorial. I've recently shared guides on how to paint rust, how to paint the lower hulls on tanks and I'm currently working through a commission where it's got a lot of armoured cars, a lot of half tracks which means a lot of rubber tyres. So I thought I would do a simple little guide on how I get a nicely finished off tyre. You know one that looks weathered, it doesn't look too flat or too featureless but doesn't take a great deal of expertise or time to complete. We're just going to be using the acrylic base colour, enamel as a wash and then some pigments to finish things off before we put that final coat of matte varnish to protect everything. So let's get started. Let's get started folks by painting the tyres themselves. It's a nice simple process and in itself doesn't require any particular techniques. It just requires a bit of care and attention, particularly around wheel hubs or like in this case where there's lots of hull or suspension or, or underside or fenders that are close to the wheels. My tyre colour of choice is Panzer AC's Dark Rubber. There are so many different kinds of colours you could use here. Dark grey, German grey, you know the list goes on and on and on. I would recommend that you don't go much darker than dark grey. Black for instance, you could use it but it's a very very strong contrast with the rest of the vehicle and looks maybe a little bit too factory fresh for my particular taste. The A-Trad you can see me painting here has got quite small tyres and you'll find small tyres on other vehicles such as the half tracks or soft skin transport and the size of the wheel will determine the finished look as well to a degree the sculpt of the wheel, you know, the, the tread that's visible. So you may have different outcomes and require a different approach when weathering your tyres. These Puma kits have got big chunky tyres and as such this larger area is going to help us go to town with the weathering and give us lots of space to apply the effects that we want to see. We're going to have to apply two coats before we finish these guys. You're not going to get the complete opaque rubber surface just by one coat of paint. I normally start by painting the areas that require the greatest care so that you are fresh when you're coming to it rather than painting all the rough areas, the tread and such likes which is going to cause also the, the hairs on the brush to start to splay and get the, a bit of wear and tear there. I want to get the brush fresh, my eyes fresh and paint around the hub. That's the, the trickiest bit. If we can be as careful as we can at this point, it will save on the amount of corrections and tidy ups that we need to do. And keeping things fresh, both from yourself and from the uh, perspective of the brush, will help. The underside of the vehicle where it's out of sight, you don't have to be quite so careful. I recommend you be as careful as you can, but you know, if there's a little spot of paint here and there and the only way someone's going to see it is if they lift up the kit and start turning it around, well, don't stress it folks, you don't have to make extra work for yourself. And don't forget any spare tyres folks, take the same approach here. This might be a little bit more tricky to paint because it's proximity to the rear of the vehicle, but just paint it in the same way as use the same approach as you did for the road wheels themselves. Once we've got the rubber all painted on, two coats remember folks, we can do a bit of tidy up on these wheel hubs. If we've been careful there won't be too much to do. Now we're going to use the base colour that we painted the uh, vehicle with originally and in this case Tamiya Dark Yellow 2 going to use a fine pointed brush and I'm going to keep the point of that brush aimed at the internal area of the hub so there is less chance of that point 
reaching over the very, very small uh, rim of the hub here and come into contact with the rubber. Now this could be a, a don't sweat it moment too folks, you know, sometimes the, the rims on these wheels are tiny and barely visible. So you can decide yourself how much effort and time you want to put into this stage. After this final tidy up we are ready for the weathering, that's going to require a gloss coat. So once you are ready, get the whole kit gloss coated and we can move on to the enamel wash. There's lots of enamel washes out there folks, I'm just using what I've got lying about which is my MIG brown wash. I've also got a little bottle of thinner here which I'm going to use to work the wash once it's applied and get it towards the final look that I'm after. I'm going to be working straight out of the bottle here folks and especially when I'm working on this underside area, the lower hull, I'm just going to slap the paint on. Now make sure your brush is long enough to reach in and around the wheels and the suspension and into the fenders so you don't have any um, clear spots that's maybe going to catch the eye. Maybe it won't because it's going to be sitting down on the table and invisible but it's worth just taking a little bit of a minute just to work that brush in and we don't have to be too careful at this point either. Then we're on to the wheels and we want to be a little bit more careful here. We're not creating the background as you do with the lower hull, we're creating the foreground here of the, the, the lower hull. So just take your time and put the paint on a little bit more evenly. We are going to work it with the thinner but we don't want to put too much paint on and require too much reworking. So we're going to give the brush a quick clean to get the, the enamel paint off it, dip it in the thinner and then start working all these painted areas. I recommend you start working it straight away, don't delay, do one vehicle at a time and clean your brush as you're going to stop a build up of too much paint otherwise you're just going to be pushing it around. I'm going to pay more attention to the tyres than to the lower hull to get the, the right coverage. Now you have to leave the enamel wash to dry overnight but you can see this is the next day, you can see we've got a nice gritty earthy look to them, the hubs they're fine we can actually just leave them as they are and we're now ready to move on to the tyres which have got that lovely enamel finish to them for the next stage to grip to. Now the pigment I'm going to be using is a light colour because I want a nice contrast with the dark rubber colour. When we put this onto the wheels we don't want to just darken things down, we want it to look in this case like there's some dry earth on the, uh, the tyre. Now I'm using a palette to work with my pigments, don't be tempted to apply the pigments dry to your miniature because pigments are something you need to understand how thick or how thin they are before you start applying them. It's kind of like um, salt, adding salt to uh, something, something you're cooking, it's easy to add too much and once you have it's very difficult to then, in case of salt you can't take it back out and in case of pigments it's very difficult to remove the excess. So work on a palette, add water to the palette, add some pigments in there and get the right mix so that you're confident when you're applying it that you've already halfway to the finished look. I'm going to apply the pigment to the flat of the tyre and the tread and also the rear. I'm not going to put any on the underside of the hull, it's already got a weathered look from the enamel paint so there's not necessarily any real benefit to adding pigments to something that you're not really going to see. Now you can see I'm putting this on really wet but that doesn't mean really wet and really full of pigment as I said before. We're putting it on as a nice thick wash. Now when you're applying pigments you've, without some experience in the area you won't really understand what the finished look is going to be. It might look as though you've not put enough pigment on and you may be tempted to add more. I would just wait until it's dry before thinking about adding any more. 
I'm making sure I'm getting the pigment all around the tyre, not just on the flat outer surfaces, but also in the treads. It doesn't have to be absolutely symmetrical everywhere, folks. In fact, it'll look a bit better if there is a bit of asymmetry about it, you know, so it doesn't look as though it's been manufactured and it's weathering that has applied itself naturally. So a quick double check to make sure the wash hasn't slewed around too much and dragged all the pigment off to one area before I'm going to set it down to dry. Now that's only one side I've done, but I'm going to leave it lying on its uh, unpainted side, as we see here, just to make sure that the side we've just done has got a chance to dry and then I can start working another one, follow the same process so that the pigment's got a chance to settle. Once it's dry, you can have a look around and see how much pigment there is on it and then take just a damp brush and start working that pigment. There may be areas where there's too much, areas where there's too little. So we can start drawing it around, but your brush just has to be damp, folks. You're not wanting to recreate a wash here, otherwise it will just start spreading again and resettle. So we're going to take the damp brush and kind of work from the outside edge of the tyre in. That is going to soften the pigment on the outside area, thicken it in the middle and also create a little bit of a, almost like a spoke-like effect that you might see on tyres where there's little lines of dust starting to um, come out from the, the hub. We need to show a bit of patience here also folks when they're doing this because if you put on too much water as I said you're basically going to start the whole process over again and what we're doing here is looking at working the pigment down stage by stage. See I've let it dry again and then I've gone back to the damp brush and I'm starting to work it again. Always looking to see if whether there's an excessive amount or where there's not enough and then trying to create some nice dusty kind of patterns on the flat of the tyres. I'm just going to let the video play for a bit folks just so you can see the brush work, get an idea of how I'm working this. If you're familiar with pigments you probably know how to proceed. If you're not familiar just have a look and try and follow what it is I am looking to achieve. Now I should point out I am applying this pigment with water so that I can keep working it and be confident that I'm going to get the finished look that I'm after. I'm then going to seal it with a matte varnish spray from my airbrush. If you want to seal these pigments with anything else, you're going to have to seal it as you're applying it initially because anything else you put over the top of it in the terms of brushwork is going to start moving it. There are pigment um, fixers out there on the market but you could use such things as a uh, matte varnish as you're doing it initially. However, like I said, you will then have a totally fixed and finished look. So a spray varnish is my preferred way. And let's not forget the spare wheels guys. I don't want to paint the spare wheel in the same way as I have painted the road wheels because they would weather differently. 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a nice simple wash of uh, panzerisis like mud and then just put a wash over the surface very very simple just don't make it too heavy and it will just give it a dusty appearance and that is the most likely form of weathering that you're going to see there and that is us folks that's us done it's just a couple of steps it takes a bit of time but it can make a big difference in the final look of those wheeled vehicles hope you found it useful as always thanks for watching thanks to all the subscribers out there too and if you'd like to subscribe please do so to help us build this kind of content and get it out to people who enjoy this aspect of the hobby and if you hit the bell button folks then we'll definitely see you on the next one